So here we're going to analyze power series for convergence. Now whenever you're analyzing a power series for convergence, you're not asking the question whether or not this series converges or diverges, because you have a variable in the inside. So what you're going to ask is, what are the x values that make this series converge or diverge? So in other words, what is the interval of convergence? So we we have a complete handle on one one type of power series, and that's one that resembles a geometric series. So if you think about this this series given here, this as stated is represented as some some r value raised to the nth power. In other words, it's it's a geometric series. So we know that that converges as long as the absolute value of r is less than one, and that fact alone will allow us to find the interval of convergence here. So let's just solve this inequality and we'll talk a little bit about what it means. So for x over 2, x minus 2 over 4 to be less than 1 is another way of stating this, or the, the absolute value rather, is another way of stating this. Multiply through by negative 4, I'm sorry, multiply through by 4 and then add 2 and this is my interval of convergence. Now, before I circle this as the final answer, just a couple a couple things we need to point out. Um, if you plug in a number like, plug in a number in between negative 2 and 6, like 1. If you plug in 1, then the series becomes this. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 over 4 to the n. Now that's a geometric which we know converges. We can tell the r value, the absolute value of the r value is uh, is less than 1. On the other hand, if we plugged in a number like 7, we would get, so again that's outside of our interval of, converge, of convergence here, you'd get 7 minus 2 which is 5 over 4 to the n, and that diverges. So by finding the interval of convergence, we're really just finding the range of x values that will make this become a geometric series whose sum we can actually determine. Now, you might ask, what about 6 and negative 2? Um, it turns out those um, are not part of the interval of convergence, but in the future, we're going to learn that we, we really do need to check the endpoints. So we can do this mentally. If you plug in 6, you're going to get 6 minus 2, which is... 4. 4 over 4 is 1. 1 to the n is a divergent series. And same with negative 2. You'll end up getting negative 1 to the n, which is also divergent. So the endpoints don't work, so we don't need to adjust the inequality uh, by adding an extra line under it in this case. And that will actually always be the case for a geometric. So in any case, this is the interval of convergence for this particular series. Alright, so geometric series like this um, we have we have a good handle on. We know how to analyze them. We have this nice inequality. Uh, we have a formula for the sum. Um, going forward, we're going to see series that aren't geometric, and we're going to have to figure out ways of analyzing them for convergence and divergence. So as I stated, um, what about power series that are not geometric? So our goal is to be able to find the interval of convergence for any power series. Now really only three things can happen. One is that the interval of convergence is everything, all x values. So for instance, this series here, it doesn't matter what you plug in for x, it will always sum up to e to the x. So if you plug in 4, 0.2, 1000, that series will, those series will converge to e to the, what did I say first, e to the 4, e to the 0.4, or in e to the thousand. So all x values will make this a convergent series. The other extreme is that this series always diverges ex unless you plug in the center. So if you plugged in um, the center of the series, in this case the center would be zero. If you plug in zero into this for x, then it just becomes the series zero, whose, whose sequences are uh, just a bunch of zeros. So you're just summing up zero, and that's clearly a conversion series, but it's not that interesting. Any other number you plug in, though, will make this a divergent series. 
more commonly you'll find a, a range of x values and when x is inside that interval or range the series will converge when it's outside that range it will diverge so we've seen an example x to the n converges to this expression but only when x is in between negative 1 and 1 otherwise it diverges I'm going to note that we do have to analyze what happens at those endpoints still and we're going to need more tools for that so we'll just we'll keep our, our eye on that uh, idea and and uh, in the back of our mind and we'll handle it when we're ready. So the first test you want to use when you're analyzing the convergence of an infinite series is the nth term test. Uh, think of it as like the first hurdle that a series has to get over. This a sub n, whatever the sequence is inside the series, that has to go, that has to go to zero. If it doesn't go to zero, then we have no hope of this infinite sum actually converging to anything. It would, it would clearly go off to infinity. So this test has to be used first. But notice, it doesn't, it doesn't say, though, that um, it does not imply that if the sequence goes to zero, then it converges. Because, for example... Right, this series here diverges even though one over n goes to zero. So again, it's not it's not that this is the only this will never be the only test you use. It's just it's like a, a filtering out of sequences that clearly di clearly diverge. So in, as an example, I mean, look at uh, let's just say I had the se the series n going from one to infinity of three n plus one. right, that series there, well, this diverges since it diverges since the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n plus 1 over 2n equals 3 halves, and that's not zero. So, the nth term test is the first hurdle you'd have to jump over for something to even have a shot at converging. But it can never be used to prove convergence. It can only be used to show divergence. Um, the direct comparison test is another series test you can use, um, although the limit comparison test, which has already been introduced, is usually more convenient, and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, other than the theoretical truth of this test, why you'd use it over the, the limit comparison test. But in any case, let's just take a look at what it's saying, because logically it makes sense. So if you have a series that you know converges, and you know that at some point all the terms in another series are less than or equal to the terms inside the one you know everything about, again, that you know converges, well then this guy must converge too. Okay, it's like if you lined up the, the terms in the series one by one, and we know that the sum, um, we know that the sum of the the terms inside of C of n ends up uh, the, the partial sums approach a limit. Then clearly the ones uh, the partial sums associated with a sub n are going to approach a limit as well. And likewise, on the other hand, if we know we have a series in our hand that diverges, and the terms in a sub n eventually are bigger than or equal to that well then that series associated with it must um, diverge as well. So here's an example of how that, might, that test might be used. I've got a series here and 3 over the square root of n to the fourth plus 5. Um, so I might think to myself, well, let's see, I, I, I know that, so I'm just going to note if you think about the ignoring the plus 5 in the long run, um, then this really just behaves like the series 3 over n squared right? We know that converges right? and so if we can just show that 
um, eventually every term every term here eventually is going to be less than or equal to every term in this series then we can conclude clearly that this this series converges as well so the way the the way the reasoning works is you would say uh, 3 over the square root of n to the fourth plus 5 well that is uh, that is less than or equal to 3 over the square root of n to the fourth right if you make the denominator smaller you make the uh, the number bigger and this this is going to be true for all n bigger than or equal to um, bigger than or equal to 1. So, what does that tell us? Well, 3 over the square root of n to the fourth is also equal to 3 over n squared. So ultimately, the terms inside of the series we're analyzing, one by one, are going to be less, you know, when, when lined up next to the ones, the terms of 3 over n squared. Um, it's going to be they're going to be less than or equal to all those and we know that this series 3 over n squares con squared converges so that implies so this all implies that that converges as well Another test is the simplified limit comparison test, which I've shown in another video, but it's worth mentioning here again in this context. Um, again, just to to restate it, if we have two series and we know the behavior of one of them, then if we just take the limit of the terms of the sequence, uh, the ratio of the terms of the sequence, and if that goes to a non-zero real number, then they both behave the same way. So, to apply it to this problem, I might say that this sequence here, again, noticing I'm, I'm circling the sequence, not the series, that's going to behave like, well, 3n three over, three over the square root of n to the fourth, since that 5 isn't so, so important, which is 3 over uh, n over n squared, which is 3 over n. So it's going to behave like that for large n. Uh, but we know that you know that that diverges. So so long as I can show that the limit of these terms as n goes to infinity is equal to some number then that tells me they behave the same way. So this ends up being 3n squared over 3 square root of n to the fourth plus 5. And again, this limit can be um, can be evaluated many ways. I mean, I would I won't. I don't mind that you just throw this five out because this, as an n behavior model, this is behaving like this, which is you can see that the, the actual writing of the limit ends up just kind of being a, um, in, in not an afterthought, but I mean it's it's your justification for the, for the. Um, the similar behavior of these two series, but again, your choice, your choice up here, really is what, you know, you, as soon as you choose that, you you already know the answer. You already know that the behavior of this series. So this is all just I'm um, showing your work, but that's that's not zero and it's not infinity, so that implies that our original series. Converges to. I'm sorry, diverges to.
And uh, here are a couple of series for you to try using some of the tests we've come up with so far.